everybody. It's Deb from DNDR Gallery. Today I have a 16 by 20 inch canvas. I'm going to be doing an open cup traveling pour. And this is just the top of a little uh, plastic cup. This is my favorite little tool I use when I do this pour. This is my favorite pour. Now I'm going to take a few minutes here to um, talk about pouring medium and paint. I really want to gear this particular um, video for beginners. So my base coat is a combination of two parts of the Amsterdam Titanium Buff Light. I added one part of Deco Art Satin Enamel. And I will show you that. This is the nice color I got with that. That's going to be my base coat. My other paints I'm going to use are Modern Masters Venetian Blue, very pretty color. Modern Masters Pearl White. Parage Posse Ocean Teal Blue. This is a Christina Welsh line, and I will list her uh, the name of her um, channel in my description. She does have an Etsy shop. You can pur purchase these paints. Very nice, creamy paints. Again, my next paint is the Parage Posse Morning Pansy Shimmer. My last paint is Amsterdam Carmine. So let's talk about the pouring medium. The pouring medium for all of my paints today was two parts of the Floetrol, which is a paint extender. It's not a pouring medium. It's just a paint extender, helps your paint dry uh, smooth. So two parts Floetrol to one part paint. I added a squirt of GAC 800, and if you're not familiar with GAC 800, that stops uh, cracking and crazing as your paint as your painting is drying. And I added a dollop of the Amsterdam pouring medium. The only paint I added a little water to was my base coat, and I probably added about two squirts of water to that. So let me show you consistency here. And what I'm going to do is stop the camera. I'm going to put down my base coat and then I'll bring you back and we can start painting. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I have my base coat down of the titanium, the buff titanium. There's just a few things I wanted to mention before I get started laying my paint down. There's been a lot of questions from beginners. What materials do I need to get started? Well, you need your canvas, you need your paints. Um, you do need some type of tape. I tape the back rim off of my canvas. I use push pins. Here's a jumbo push pin and here's a, a regular size push pin. Either one of those would do, and you can get that online. And it help, it's helpful to have a torch. You can buy the, this online also. It's probably uh, maybe $20. Maybe you can get it even cheaper than that. I've had this one quite a while. And what does uh, the torch do? It pops the bubbles. I made this paint maybe two hours ago, so I am popping some bubbles. If you can make your paint up the night before, that is helpful because then those air bubbles will come out of your paint and you won't have to deal with so many of those. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of my base coat here. I'm going to start right about in this area. Lay that down and then I'll lay my little cup right on top of that. 
then all I do is just start to pour my paint in my little cup and also what I'll do I should have done this first is I put a little bit of this paint around my cup just to help it move You can help your cup along if it's not moving, and you will see me do that here. And I have seen people do a, a dirty cup pour where they, they layer all their paints in one cup and then they just pour that into their little traveling cup here. That's another way you can do this. Okay, I'm going to, you can see the paint come out from underneath here. I am going to help it out just a little bit, just lifting it a little bit. And I like to twist mine. It's just my preference. You don't have to do that. Actually, you can just tip your canvas a certain way to help the paint move also. Just going to add a little more base coat here to help it move. The base coat that I laid down first was just a, a, a thinner on the thinner side because I knew I'd be adding these additional paints in here. You can see I have quite a bit of paint now in that little cup. So again, I'm going to help it. Doing this twisting motion. And I am hoping to get negative space here today. And if you're asking what is negative space, if you are a beginner, that's just where there is no only there's no paint or just your your base coat paint. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of my base coat right up in this area to help it move. And I'm going to actually tip, I'll tip my canvas this time to show you how that works. You can see the, the cup moving. I'm trying to guide it here a little bit. And I do want my cup to come up into this area here. And again, I'll add a little bit of base coat up here. It's 
see if I can get it to tip this way. Looks like it's going. And I'm going to move it down this way. Just a little bit more paint here and I'll be done. I like what I see so far. I'm getting a little bit of the uh, lacing or cloudy effect there. And I am just going to add a little bit more of my base coat here. to help the paint move. I add it in my corners here especially. Okay, I am going to give it a torch. You can see a lot of cell action coming up here. Okay, let's move my paints out of the way here. And I can start tipping. And I do hope that you get to see most of this, that it's in camera. And I'm going to take it slow. There's some areas that I really like right now that I would like to keep on the canvas. Another thing about using the push pins on the bottom of your canvas, when you pick it up to tip it, like I'm doing, that's what I hold on to, and your hands don't get as slippery. going to bring it back now. Going to work on this corner here. And this edge and bring it back. Okay. I'm just going to lay it down here and take a look at it. Let's 
see what I need to cover. And I am just looking at composition right now. And I think I'm going to be able to take some paint off this way. Almost straight down. There is quite a bit of paint still moving, so I do have to take some of this paint off the canvas. And now I'm bringing it back. And I'm going to take quite a bit off of this down here. I, I'm not real um, crazy about this corner down here, so I'm gonna run some of that paint off. Stretch out the other paints here. And bring it back. And I'm going to take another look at it here. See what's going on. Using that satin enamel, let me get my hands cleaned off here, is giving me this effect right here. And also this in here, that cloudy effect there. Those are the areas I really do like. I'm going to try and stretch this to this corner a little bit. Just pulling out some of those cells. And then bringing it back. Maybe turn this so you can see this better. I'm gonna pull that back. Stretch it back out again. You can see how I'm stretching it in the middle there. And again, I don't really care for a lot of what's going on in this corner, so I am going to bring it down this way and pull some of that paint off. Okay, and now I will pull it back.
pull it down this way a little little bit here. Okay, I'm going to take a look at it now. Checking my corners here. Cleaning off the bottoms. Some very, very pretty colors coming out here today. Composition wise, I'm pretty happy with the way it is right now. I think I will give it a torch. See what we bring up. A lot of really nice movement in this painting. Okay, I think I'm going to get my skewer and uh, play around with this just a few minutes. See what I can add to it. Maybe draw some lines out. Give it a little added interest. Don't be afraid to pay, play with your painting. I, I say that all the time. Okay, I think I'm going to get you down for a close-up. You can tell me what you think. Okay, everybody, here we are for the close-up, and I'm trying to show you the whole painting here. And off-camera, I did make a few changes, and I will explain those as we go along. This is the upper left-hand corner. That is one of my favorite spots right there. Got a little bit of lacing there. Just going down the left hand side here. And by using that satin enamel, it did give quite a few different effects. One of them being these little white spots that pop up. And also off camera, I added a little bit more of that carmine here and there. And this streak right there I did add that. This is the lower left hand corner. And we'll just go up the whole painting here. This is another area I like right in here. Looks like rocks. And I'm glad I did get the negative space. Again, I added some more of the carmine here. You can see as we go down, just to add a little more interest to the painting. I did do a little more tipping on this painting too, just to tip a little bit more of that paint off. This is an interesting area in here. Those little red cells popping up. And here I did add a little bit more of that carmine. 
This is the upper right hand corner and this is probably my favorite part of the whole painting. Right in here, as simple as that is. I just like the effect I got there. Again, a lot more of those little white spots from that satin enamel. And another little bit of that carmine I added. And this is the lower right hand corner. So let me know what you think of this video. If you have any questions at all at how, on how I did any of this, please leave them in the comments and I will get back to you with some answers. I hope this was a good video for beginners that want to do the uh, open cup traveling pour. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up and make sure you share it. If you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't, please consider that and help my channel grow. And until next time, take care, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.